there for them. We're here for you. Get back the life you love. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. WISC gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WISC Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. Is it time for you to replace your roof? Well, give Hadco Builders in Chester, New Jersey a call. They've built an amazing reputation over the past 30 years as one of New Jersey's top builders. Hadco will replace your roof the right way at a super fair price and usually get the job done by the time you come home from work. Call or text Tony to get a quote today at 973-818-8516 or visit them at hadcobuilders.com. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellent Award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million-dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103.
Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry. The team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can can get better with Better With Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Max. MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Sussex Meat Packing in Wharton, New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. So a very common thing that happens in homes is the fight over the thermostat. And usually the dad is in charge of it. Sometimes thermostats end up in a lockbox so nobody touches them. And if somebody touches them, they're in trouble. Trying to find a happy medium in a regular household is usually beyond the general knowledge. Most people don't know this. This is where you need somebody like us at ICS. We figure out and fine tune and personalize your personal comfort. It's like having your own black market dealer in personal comfort. From the moment you place a call with ICS, you are the most important person on the planet. From the point of contact with our dispatcher in our office to when our technician leaves your place, we wanna make sure that we exceed every expectation you had. So if you are tired of that house with the cold and hot spots and you want more personal comfort, visit our website, icshvac.com. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Hey, don't you just love it when Morris Sussex Sports broadcast your games? Or do you prefer a silent motion-detecting camera just following the movement on the court? 
Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports' award-winning service that brings you play-by-play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Essex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com. The goal, we reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, the in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score. And that is a base hit. The run will score, and freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Nick Carlson back here at Frederick Douglass Field. Morris Elite Soccer Club taking on NJ Copa here on the campus of Rutgers Newick, Frederick Douglass Field. If you're just tuning us in now, specifically if you just saw the last one as well, the W team ended up dominating their opponent 7-0. to zero. They ended up beating Cedar Stars, so now they move up to the number two team in the division. They were three, now they're two. Cedar Stars moves that one step back. They also went on the plus minuses too, and then they had drew earlier, about a week and a half ago or so. So you've definitely got a little bit of a standings flip-flop here. You're still gonna have the Long Island Rough Riders, but we have a new game here in the USL 2, Boris Ali and NJ Copa. Some of the big things to look at before we get underway, probably about a minute or so away from starting in this one. Boris Elite comes in out of the 10 teams in the division. They sit right now as the number 16 to NJ Copa FC, on the other hand, sit at five. So teams that are right there with each other at that middle part of the division, Morris Elite coming off a one and 11 season last year, struggled specifically down the stretch a little bit towards the middle of the season as well. And then NJ Copa coming in with a two and three game or two and three season. The interesting thing to look at for NJ Copa and Morris Elite is that New Jersey Copa has had 14 goals for throughout the season, yet they're only the number five team in the standings. The big reason because of that is because they have allowed the most goals in the division at 12. So their plus minus right now sits at two, but you've scored a lot of goals, but you've also given up a lot of goals too. Morris Lee, on the other hand, it's basically a completely different offense slash defense. As the Morris Lee have only allowed eight goals all season long, but their goal is four sits at four. So they're at a minus four right now on their plus minuses. The referees just look to talk things over as we're set to get underway in this one. Just some of the starting lineups in this one. For the one, two, and one, Morris Elite. Jeremy Peterson highlights starting off with Ralph Pascarella and Henry Perestrello as well. And you've got Gonzalo Franco, Augustine Puentes, and then Tomas Nunez, who the last time that we were here at home before their big road trip, Scored the lone goal in the 1-1 game against AC Connecticut as you've got Sean Riley as well. Head coach as well for this team or an assistant coach to say the least for Sean Riley. Top defenseman as well. Ethan Streeter, Gavin Morgan, Michael Mazina, and Alex Velasquez gets the start once again in goal. It was Matias Molina in the last game. Played phenomenal and then an 82nd minute goal is what kind of sent them over the mark. They ended up tying in that one in a game where they led for about 60 minutes or so, specifically going into halftime they were leading up to that 80 minute mark, just wasn't able to seal it and gave up that last second goal. But you've got Tomas Lopez in net for NJ Copa. You've also got Carlos Portas, Kendall Thomas, Sokol Mirage, and then Pablo Kowecki as well for this two and three NJ Copa team. Albert Portas, Andres Lazo, 
Logan Machacha, Israel Garcia Perez, Aiden Arbor, and Jonathan Yazo, and a bunch of subs to go along with it as well. But right now the Morris League coming in that 4-4-2 set with Velasquez there in that. A little bit of a different story for the NJ Copa as it's a 3-5-1 and one as referees still talk everything over. They're going to send out Tomas Lopez. He makes his way all the way over towards the net and we're just waiting on the signal from the referees to get set and underway. Finally, the whistle blows and we're set and underway here in this one. Five seconds through. USLW won their first game. USL2 trying to do the same in this doubleheader here at Frederick Douglass Field. Morris Elite in their light blue. And Jay Copa, we've seen Morris Elite in basically strictly red. Besides when the girls played in purple. This is the first time we're seeing the blue jerseys. As the ball sent up ahead, Puentes moves it over onto the far side and skipping around before it's finally pickpocketed away. And Jacob who comes into this game leading the division in terms of goals scored. They put up a lot compared to this Morris Elite team who does not put up a lot at all. Only four goals for, eight against, so they've done a good amount of work on defense. It's just offensively is where they struggle. He's working at the midline. Look at what NJ Copa's been able to do. Against Ironbound, they won five to zero. Cedar Stars beat them three to two, but they still put up two goals. NJ Copa three to one against Ironbound, and as well as Manhattan, they lost that one two to one. But you look over at the game against FC Motown, an offensive explosion of a five four game. That's a huge majority as to where their numbers have come from. When you think of soccer, you think of low scoring, and NJ Copa just really has not done a lot of that. As off the throw in, looking for Puentes. Ball just sent back. Lopez will recollect and send one over as neither team has really had a good offensive opportunity. Still only two minutes to go, but a lot of it's been done work-wise at midfield. A lot of passing back and forth, specifically towards the back. Lopez had his first touch. Velasquez has not seen it yet. Perez was the one with it, and now back to the direction for Thomas. Also got some newer guys in the lineup as well. Peterson, Pascarell, and Perestrello have all been there, but Mazina as well getting involved. Nunez, too, had that goal earlier. as a ball set up and in, and just straight on through. Albert Portas got behind everybody, and Velasquez wasn't even ready for it. NJ Copa goal, 2.53 through. So Portas, the one with the goal, ball that was sent in all the way inside the box and no one was really even there. Portas just kind of punched it right over. Velasquez turning around just saying, where was my defenders? The problem is, is that NJ Copa, you know they can score. They can't really play defense. It'll be interesting to see what Morris Elite does for a team that has struggled offensively, but a defense that allows a lot of goals. As Riley gets one over to Franco. Franco working back and being pushed back and finally whistles blow. Franco is being pushed back. Now he's pointing at Perestrello. As finally Velasquez punts one away and Riley will collect it. Now over with it, Mazina, Mazina takes a wild fall. 
They had an open opportunity there. Did Streeter. Streeter was kind of breaking free, but the whistle had blown, so they quickly get underway here. Nunez was the one who punched it over, and now they'll set up shop. Morgan was the one who sent it back, and now up ahead. Back towards the mid, and NJ Cope has done a good job of controlling. Puentes with it and lost it. Now up ahead, Franco still with it. Morris Elite still in control. Riley will set up just outside and then punches over and Nunez thought someone was behind him. Perestrello able to take the pass though. Five minutes through, we have already had a goal. And now NJ Copa doing a good job of controlling at mid. The throw in coming. Looking down for Puentes. Puentes makes a couple moves, now turns to his left. Spinning around a couple, bunch of great moves. Has him in front, now still in front. Trying to get away with it, finally ripped away. Copa doing a good job inside the box. Nunez had an opportunity. Now on the transition. Ball that gets fluttered off of Peterson and finally Velasquez comes down. Peterson working well the last time that we were here at home. Went down a couple times, got kicked in the leg pretty gruesomely. Got up kind of slow, needed to be helped off, came in later on, and then went back down with that same leg problem. Good to see him back up and running. As Peterson lost it there, and now a ball sent up ahead. Perestrello couldn't get a foot on it, now back towards the midline. 6 8 played through. Had the good opportunity from Nunez. Last home game, he notched the lone goal. Perestrello had the one before it. Puentes has got involved too. As Mazzina up ahead to Streeter. Streeter now over. Gives one to Puentes. And finally coming out is Lopez. Just skirts right out of that inner box. And we'll set up for Perez. Cooper moving very slowly. They've already got that 1-0 lead, so. Bears was the one who kicked it. And they're still moving very slowly. Perez, Morris Leach showing no sign of really pressing or even just pressuring in general. Now they look ahead back towards Lopez, doing a very good job at defending midfield is more sleep, but after that, there's a lot of question marks. As finally whistles blow and Streeter, looked like he shoved down, but they're gonna say it's a throw in, so Streeter's gonna take it back and look for somewhere to go and just plays it back to Riley. Finally, Morgan takes a little bit of a fall, kinda just, Skidded right across, you saw all the turf come flying up. Morgan's still down, now finally getting up. Got up a little slow, but we're gonna keep playing through here, 7.55 through. Franco's got a lot of touches. Puentes and Nito as well. As Perestrello pushes one up ahead and it bounces. Up and out of bounds. So we turn over here, NJ Copa to retake possession, 8-10 through. Talked about NJ Copa and what they've been able to do. You look at last year and definitely a different team, but a 2-1 game, an 8-0 game that they lost. 2-1, 1-0, 3-0, 5-0. 4-1-3-1-4-1. A lot of games where they have not been able to put up a lot of goals. As now moving around Zarber. Gets it in and moving quickly. As now whistles blow just outside the box. Nunez was the one who got a foot on him. So it looks like they're gonna have a kick from just outside the box. So Velasquez, if it sticks out what it is, gonna have a really good opportunity for NJ Copa. So 
they're gonna line it up. You got Kowecki over there. Velasquez is set and ready to roll inside the box, but the wall's being built right now in front. As now the wind up, the kick, the shot, and Velasquez comes up with it. Able to keep this game at 1-0, a laser right to his chest. So Velasquez faces his first. Real good one where he makes a save. The other one was a goal that went through the back very early in this one, if you're just joining us now. As Perestrello looks ahead towards Franco and then sets one up now for Mazzina. Mazzina finds Streeter and he's got a lot of green grass in front of him. Streeter punches one up, finds a cutter and headed away, trailing down the line and finally out of bounds. So a corner kick coming. Nunez is going to head over, but a good opportunity coming here for the Morris Elite. Morris Elite, as I talked about earlier, only four goals, four and eight against. I'll get into the specifics of their schedule and what's happened. Right after this corner kick, Nunez has a good opportunity here. 10.45 through. He punches one up directly into the middle, headed up. Morgan got ahead on it and then rolls out of bounds. So they're going to say it was last off Morgan. Morgan disagreed with it. Went over to the ref and had a couple of words, but 11 minutes through and 0 for 1 on corner kicks are the more elite. So you look back at their schedule and 4 to 1 when they played FC Motown in the opener that was on the road and then Morris Elite and FA Euro New York tied. That was a draw that came very late in that one at the 82nd minute mark. You look over at the Morris Elite and the Westchester Flames as well. A 2-1 game. Morris Elite won that game. And then the Rough Riders, the best team in the division, they only lost 2-0 as it's Puentes. Looking towards Streeter and now goes that way. Back to the direction Streeter. Comes back up with it. Now trying to fight for it down the line. A big scramble for it. Just in that corner and finally bodies fall. Streeter not happy. Gets one over. Mazina punches one up ahead. Still inside the box. Paul sent on through and pushed away. Once again back with it. And it's good. A goal from Enrique Perestrello. Some chaos inside the box led to it, but 12 minutes through, we got a 1-1 game here. Just absolute chaos inside the box, set up by Mazina, and then had shots that just ended up all over the place, and Perestrello just pushed one in the right side. Perestrello had the season opening goal in that first game. Came in off the later stages and Henrik Perestrello as goal number one. We got a tie game here, 12-40. As whistles blow, as Riley got bumped. But 12.46 left to go. Or, excuse me, played through. So Velasquez has been under some duress. Tomas Lopez, and really his first shot that he's faced allows a goal. As Velasquez punches one all the way up towards Puentes, and Puentes ranging over, they push it back. At least they thought about going to Lopez, but he fooled even me up here. It's 13 19 through, they finally go back that way. Now playing towards the mid, the ball sent over. Streeter sends it away, got his left foot on it, and just. Sent it out of bounds, so off the throw and they look to catch Morris lead off guard as whistles blow is very clearly Mazzina just stuck his leg out and Arbor hit the deck, had some words for Messina. Didn't even really look like he was acknowledging him. As NJ Copa had that, that goal in the first two minutes or so. Minute through is a beautiful tackle there. No whistles blown. Arbor just completely just grabbed on and bear hugged and threw him down. No whistle though. 14 12 played through as NJ Copa looking to attack in the offensive zone. Come on, come on. 
Marriage with it. And then now winding up, thought about it, but Mazina steps in front of it. Riley gets involved as well, and finally they play it back. NJ Copa, when it feels like they really can't penetrate, they just move the ball back. Not a lot of crossers, not a lot of balls set up. They don't have a good opportunity, they just go back with it. As whistles blow, Franco is the one going for it, but they'll have a free kick here as Riley sets up and just goes short. They go back to Riley, interesting to see if they go deep with it. They decide to go short and the ball played off the foot weird, ends up in Kowecki. Kowecki up ahead, now on the far side, Portas. Portas has a cutter going through, getting around him and a shot, scored on the right side. Just narrowly got past Velasquez. And we have a 2-1 game, 15-22 through early in this one. Just the ball set up ahead and I mean Portas, just an absolute laser right past Gavin Morgan. Velasquez right now in the two shots that he's faced does have one save, but he's faced three shots and has allowed two goals. One of which was point blank, another one, say what you want about that one. Pretty good shot opportunity and ended up finding the back of the net, so Velasquez has allowed two goals. We have a 2-1 game, so 16-10 played through. If we stick on this same track that we're on, we can potentially have a high scoring game here. As Riley. Riley also one of the coaches for Morris Elite, as we talked about on the broadcast before. He's also the head coach of Manhattanville currently. So a little bit of a Swiss Army knife can do it all. As whistles blow down the line, a throw in coming. 16 42 throw. Come on, man. Messina the closest one to us. I wasn't sure if he was subbing or not. He was definitely on that line, but looks to be okay as Riley in those neon green cleats lines up and fires one. Messina plays it off, now sets up for Nunez. Nunez takes a slide tackle, still staying with it. Streeter on the side. Streeter pops one up, still inside the box, and now trying to get rid of it. Finally, he does, and now set over for Copa. As finally whistles blow as Franco just completely pulled down Kowecki. So he looked to go far with it. Portas, the one who just had it. And he's off sides. If they just called off sides, and they did, the flag is up. So an off sides call. A lot of miscommunication. You've seen NJ Copa been a little quiet. Morris Lee doing a lot of talking, a lot of pointing, a lot of yelling over at each other. This might be the most vocal I've ever seen the guys throughout their home games. As Peterson, haven't seen him a lot in this one, winds up. And just elects to go short. So Morgan will play it back in Velazquez was already surrendered the two goals. You had Molina in the last game, played phenomenal, just up until that 82nd minute where they surrendered that goal. As Perestrella, who just had the goal, sets one up now back to Riley. As Riley winds up and fires. They're looking towards the opposite direction, has Pascarella over there. Pascarella hasn't gotten involved all that much. Lopez came out, his whistles blow, looking for a penalty shot. No whistles blew or anything. So NJ Copa will take over here as finally whistles blow. It looks to be a free kick coming. Nunez is the closest one to him. 19.08 through. 2-1 game. If we stick on the same trajectory, we're gonna be at around maybe six goals in total by the time we get to halftime as now we're up ahead. 
moving quickly with it. Velasquez comes out and able to make a big save. Lazo's the nearest one there, but Velasquez had to come all the way out for that one. Riley was there as well. He was the nearest defender. You've got Morgan now with it, but he gives it back over to Riley and they'll look to set up shop as Perestrello takes the receipt of the pass. And now finally whistles blow. Perestrello got a little handsy, so a kick coming. As now, they're gonna say it's a yellow card on Perestrello. Not sure if he said anything or not, but a yellow card has just been given to Perestrello, so you've got a free kick coming from the same exact spot. This is the one where Velasquez just easily caught in his chest. And he got another good opportunity here as they build that wall. Got Perestrello, Streeter, Riley, Molina is there as well. Nunez, Molina. Franco. As now the kick. Lines up and fires and a shot just way over. Almost into the parking lot. As Velasquez just waits for that ball to come down the rocks and Finally collects it in 21 through. Here on Morris Elite Day. A lot of girls in the youth club came out to support the USLW. Some of the boys in the youth club as well here to support the USL too. You could also get involved in the Morris Elite Cup which takes place here in 2023 on June 24th, you can register today. As well as the U8 and U18 games is now moving inside the box and still with it. Coppa doing a good job of moving in and finally, a ball sent back and over as Velasquez sets it and collects. It's also the U8 and U18 boys and girls for the Morris Elite Cup. That starts on June 24th and June 25th as a ball set up for Molina. He had the shot and just misses right. Had a perfect opportunity inside the box, just on the line or so. Had a good chance, but ended up just with too much power on it. Molina doing a really good job getting in the right place at the right time. As well as Parastrello, who was able to notch that first goal, making that the 2-1 game. About 22 and a half minutes through. So officially halfway through this half. And a ball sent back to Lopez and a very long ball. The press is on and they just send it back. Molina over to range and heads it back over. Nunez gets a foot on it. And finally Morris Lee back with it. Now ball sent all the way over and Lopez will collect it. And we will have a free kick coming. You take away the first 15 minutes or so. I mean, NJ Copa, you had that goal in the first couple minutes. Parastrelli able to notch one too, but feels like since about that 12 minute mark, it's really been just kind of both teams battling at that midfield line. NJ Copa's had a couple opportunities. Morris Lee had that good one right there with Molina, but, or Mazina, but just a little too far to the right. A lot of power on his foot, just booted it right over. So Lopez might have got away with one there, but Morgan just quickly comes up all the way from the defense as a body falls. Pascarella down and holding his right leg. 23-53 <coughs> played through. Pascarella gets up walking just a little gingerly as Perez lost it and now up ahead. Moving quickly with it and finally stolen away. Koopa on the move and now up ahead Puentes. A lot of scrambling over there on that near side corner as Morgan gets it over to Riley. He's wide open and looking for somewhere to go. 
And we'll just play it back as Riley and Morgan just keep moving it further back as Velazquez will set up and just boot it all the way to the side. And you got to think that that one hurt as Schreeder just took it basically right off the noggin. As Mazzina had the shot earlier, does a couple moves, now sets one up. Over towards the box, moving quickly in. Has one for Nunez, and it just gets stolen away. A good opportunity. Nunez not happy. As now getting in front of it, Franco in a body falls. Hortas the one who fell. He also had the goal earlier. Making it that 2-1 game. No sign of subs yet. We're still early in this one. 25 through, 20 left to go as the ball set over towards the side. Lazo ranging down, getting around Morgan inside the box. Couple moves, a couple more moves, and Morgan sends it away. A great play there defensively. 25 22 through. As Streeter sets it back up for Riley. So now Mazina. With it and looking to set up. Puentes on the near side, looking over for Nunez. Now moves around the box, has a shot, and just misses right. Another good opportunity. Had it from Mazina early, he missed right now. Puentes misses right, and Lopez is getting away with a couple of these. Still, Horsley trails by one. So Lopez is gonna have a kick. 26-15. And now up ahead, Morgan able to use that tall height of his. And finally, whistles blow. What have been a good opportunity for NJ Koopa. It's 26-34 through. And finally, whistles blow again is another just around at that midfield line. Everybody not happy on that side. As Morgan just winds up again and gives it over to Riley. He boots it once again, trying to find a trailer. Has Mazzino over there. Took it off of his head, ranging towards the side and able to keep it in. Tiptoed down that line and kept it in. NJ Copa leading this one two to one. Lopez has a couple saves, but also a couple of balls that have just missed the net completely on really good opportunities. And that defense just kind of breaks down. We've seen it with the Morris Elite. Able to just get right past everybody as Nunez just bodying his way through and finally whistles blow right on that R. They set up shop once again, so quickly trying to catch him off guard. Schreeder looking for somewhere to go. And then gets it back to Riley. Riley back to Morgan. They'll just go to Velasquez and 27-50 through and a slow down pace of play here for both of these teams. Velasquez and his defenders just playing back and forth, but. Also here on Morris Elite Day, it's also a great time to let you know that you can get your kids into the game with Morris Elite 2023 summer camps. Whether it's the soccer, swim, or goalkeeper technical camps, they all start in just a few weeks or so, and you can register today and be a part of the Morris Elite with their summer camps starting on June 26th. If you're looking for more information, you can go to www.morrisleetsoccer.com slash summer camps. Morris Elite, another good opportunity there. Just inside is Peterson trying to track one down. A whistle's blow. Peterson charged. It's 28 45 through. There's been a lot of whistles blown in this one. Very highly aggressive game. It's now ball set up ahead. As that whistle's blow as Lazo completely hits the deck. Streeter comes over as a yellow card whistled. Lazo gets up slowly and Streeter just kind of walks it off, helped him up and then kept going. 
So make it the second yellow card. Streeter has the one. Perestrello has the other. Perestrello does have a goal, though, so you got to think he's okay with the yellow if the goal came along with it. But as the referees talk about it, we're almost 15 minutes left to go here in the first half. Now lining up and firing one. Curving to the right, inside the box, headed up and over. Velasquez got help from the post and it bounced up and in. Just a little too far out of his reach. Velasquez dodges the bullet, still 2-1. Now 15 left to go here in this first half. Riley, as we talked about, head coach of Manhattanville. In his 30s. And Morgan punches one over towards Puentes. Puentes not able to get a jump on it as now they look back towards the other direction. And then just sent back. Lopez sets it up and just punches one over. Now with it is Streeter. Now back over and a little bit of a turnover there as now whistles blow as Franco. Another yellow card, so it almost just feels like every time they pull out the whistle, they accidentally pull out the yellow card and just say, all right, yellow card. It's 30-54. Three yellow cards have been given in this one. One to Perestrello, one to Franco, and as well as one to Ethan Streeter. So three quick yellow cards, 31 minutes through. Definitely something to look at here if you're the Morris Elite with a lot of this game left to be played. So Peterson sent in the ball, a little bit of confusion there as they were set to bring out a ball to replace it, but then Peterson went over to grab it. So now moving up with it, back the other direction. And then Morgan, looks like he shoved someone, but no whistle blow, so Puentes played it off his foot. Nunez back with it, and now ball sent all the way back, so. MJ Copa doing a good job of playing keep away in that offensive zone. Have allowed 14 goals on the season. I've only allowed one so far in this one. The Morris Elite have never scored more than two goals this season. They scored two against Westchester, won that game two to one. Beyond that, it's either been one or zero. Right now we sit at one. One one against FA Euro New York, two zero against the Rough Riders. Motown as well was four to one as an interception here from Lazo. Lazo skips one through and now up ahead, looking for somewhere to go. Finds a cutter, skipping around and Riley able to get a foot on it and send one up ahead for Jeremy Peterson. Peterson sets one back in Velazquez. Now up ahead, Peterson collects it and sends it up to Puentes. Nunez gets a foot on it, has a cutter over there. Has Mazina, the one-on-one -on -one Mazina. Moving around, a couple of dancing moves. Now fires a shot and just bounces over off the foot of what looked to be Arbor, but an easy save there by Lopez. Could have tied it. Still, we stay back one. Do the Morris Elite 33-30 as no whistle blows as a body falls. So Morris Elite looking to get something going. Has one up ahead. Putes with it. Gets around a couple before losing it right over to Lopez. And Lopez... Sets up and just throws it as, to the coach's dismay, you can hear it. Not happy as coach did not and coach Mike. As now Riley takes a fall. Looks like he was about to, to take a hit into it. As now you're hearing that Riley's got a problem with the call. I think it was the one who had just gotten fouled, not happy with the call, was he? But 10 minutes 
about to be left to go. You can also know that the Morris Elite Super Y tryouts, the Super Y team is one of the best opportunities to go against some of the top players in the region. You can try out this summer with an opportunity to qualify for the Nationals in Tampa, Florida, as well as be a part of the Morris Elite. Now ball sent on all the way through. He's got Kowecki, Kowecki looking for somewhere to go and almost had an opportunity, but just punched it out to the right. Riley had a foot step by step with him. I think it's gonna be a corner kick, so they're gonna say that Riley was able to punch it away. So a corner kick coming here, under 10 left to go. A 2-1 game as Kowecki steps over at a golden opportunity, still is a good one here and a corner kick coming. As now back over, Kowecki has to set up back at the line, gets a little bit around Riley and then sends one all the way in. Thomas now looking for someone to go, got Gavin Morgan on him. Portas, the one who had the goal earlier, now back with it. A lot of slide tackles, is just trying to infiltrate that box, sent over Morrisley, doing a good job of pressuring, still headed up in the air. Now back with it, an opportunity inside the box, sent back. Morris Lee doing a good job inside that box. Pascarella with it and takes a fall. Whistles blow, he's holding his leg and in pain. He's holding that left leg and down and not getting up. Referees are gonna come over, he is turning around in pain. We saw it with Jeremy Peterson in just about that same exact spot earlier. Ascarell's gonna get up slowly and he's gonna remain in this one, so. Something to definitely look at specifically on that far side. In terms of the fact that he sits at around that midfield in between defense and 36-52 through. Riley pushes one back to Streeter. Straighter up ahead to Puentes, and now Franco looking for Mazina. And just a little too far out of his reach. He did have Streeter and Nunez to his left and right. As a throw in coming, you'd expect the pressure. It's just inside that flag. Under eight left to go. As now Riley doing battle. Now Morgan comes over, gets around a couple. Kowecki, he's got a wide open opportunity. Now sends it over. Everybody gets back and recollects as the Morris Elite come back. Now moving in, coming around a couple. Looking for someone to go fire. Shot, Schmitz is right. Velasquez really didn't even flinch on it. As we're now at that 38 minute mark, seven left to go. If you're Morrisley, you gotta feel somewhat good going into this locker room, only down one, but getting another goal to tie would feel even better. Specifically against a team that has allowed the most goals in the division. As Riley sets one up ahead, Nunez plays it off his foot, has Messina all the way down the side, working on Arbor, Messina, Potentially looking across, now waits and just fires a little bit of a blooper of a grounder. Right over into the hands of Lopez. Still a bunch of good opportunities here. A lot of them, the majority of the time, have come down to Mazzino looking to set something up. Now off the header, Peterson just pushes one all the way out of bounds right in front of some of the youth kids, this is if you're just tuning in now. It is Morris Elite Day. A little bit of a later game here, a big show out for the girls game. It's 7-11, a little bit later. 
as Peterson sets one all the way back in. And NJ Koba doing a good job of just punching it away. Is now a ball set back up ahead. Velasquez comes towards the far edge of the box and looks to pick it up. Now finally does. Looking for somewhere to go. Gets it back over to Streeter as Riley trails behind him. Streeter punches one up. Nunez is there, but Kendall Thomas able to get a foot on it and just set it back for Lopez. As whistles blow, Nunez looked like he wasn't happy. That whistle blew a solid couple of seconds or so after Streeter comes over not happy. Everyone else seems confused. Regardless, we're under five. Left to go here in this one, and Lopez is gonna be the one to have a kick, and he just sends a boomer all the way down the near side, and still up in the air is Morgan. Just pops it right back up. Pascarella. Good to see that. His leg is still in good shape, came down and Looked to be irritating pain earlier. As Lazo working up on it, 40-47 play through, looks towards the near side, Arbor. Spent a lot of time on defense, comes in now on offense, and then pick cleats, looks for somewhere to go. Perez now over on that far side. A lot of the damage has come on that far side when it's ended up there, is now a crosser through, and just out of the reach, just gets sent back by Franco. Orsalich is trying to get to that two goal mark. Specifically before halftime. As now whistles blow, is it an easy call there? Nunez got shoved down, so a, a kick coming. Got a good opportunity here. Just almost at that three minute left to go mark. If you're looking for a good opportunity, you're gonna find it right here. No signal yet and just waiting for the referees as Velasquez has come all the way up to the circle. Nunez looking for somewhere to go and then now fires the ball up and in, headed up and up and over, still ranging over and finally out of bounds. So a, a corner kick coming, you had the kick there. Now Nunez goes over to do the corner, sprinting over there now. So it looks like they're gonna get started early. Or at least Nunez is trying to find him catched off guard. Riley places it down and Nunez looking for somewhere to go. Riley comes into the box, so you know they're not gonna go, you know they're not gonna play it short. Now the kick, up and in. Still inside the box, now pushed away. Pascarella fires a boomer, still up in the air. Now kicked up ahead. Streeter trying to collect it and looks towards Perestrello. Perestrello plays it back. Now you got two minutes left to go and running out of time with any extra time. Looking him out, one more really good opportunity is Nunez looking for somewhere to go. Streeter just boots it back to Velasquez and you gotta think, they're gonna just mount one more good rush, it's gonna come right here. Reader's done a good job playing keep away as well as Riley and Morgan. His defense has done a good job besides those two opportunities. As now Velasquez sends one all the way up. Nunez plays it off of his foot. Now takes a step in front of it, lost it, and Streeter comes up with it. Now Nunez back with it and a scramble for it. Now he's on top of it and Nunez comes out with it. Now over and whistles blow. So a free kick coming here from Perez. Just under a minute left to go. Now up ahead and whistles blow and the referees just 
talking with Kendall Thomas as well as Yazo. Some confusion here as Nunez was behind them. Heard some on the bench say that should be a yellow card. As Lopez sets one up, gets in front of it. Morris Leach is trying to do a good job of holding on to it as whistles blow. Franco is right beside him. It almost looked like Perez just kind of fell down and they charged him. Now finally after some talk, now a yellow card. So Franco's got two, so make it a red card. So Franco's got the red. Riley comes over to talk as well as Franco, Streeter, and Mazina. I mean, if it sticks, we're going to have a red. Now they're going to say it's Streeter. I mean, regardless, Franco did have the yellow and then Streeter as well. So Streeter was on the all the way opposite side of the, the play as he comes off and... Just takes off his shirt as Riley now getting into it with the referees as well. <laughs> Referee now going over to look at it in the middle. Franco not happy. Now Nunez comes over as well. So there's a lot going on as you got to expect extra time. And finally, whistles blow, and we're back underway. So Streeter has officially been tossed. And now looking to set up once again, gives it over. Portas with it, and whistles blow as Riley takes a fall. Be interested to see how much time that they put in, if any. I mean, we're already at that 45 minute mark. Has now set up ahead. Looking for somewhere to go. Peterson comes all the way now, ranging now. It's Puntes. Now back to Lopez and pressuring as they set up. Perestrello look to potentially take one at it and running out of time here. Here comes the throw in. It's now set up ahead for Nunez. Nunez lost it for a second, then now still with it finally. And Jay able to take it away, and now here they come. ahead with it and working on Franco. Franco took a little bit of a step and now they'll just play it back. No whistle yet as now they go to the near side. Arbor working on it, now sends it over. Lazo in the corner and finally, whistles blow as that's gonna be it. It was an offsides call regardless, but Streeter tossed on two yellows leading to that red. 45 minutes played through. Perestrello's got a goal, Portas as well. And we've got a 2-1 game here. Definitely a good opportunity here for Morris Elite. Try to get that one back. Bunch of good opportunities from both these teams, but for Morris Elite and NJ Copa, a 2-1 game in favor of NJ Copa here on Morris Elite Day. I'm Nick Carlson. Don't go anywhere. See you in about 15 minutes or so right here on Morris Essex Sports. Froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. Watching your loved one play high school sports is a special time in their life you don't want to regret missing. If you're not present for these events due to drinking, misusing medication, or lost control using drugs recreationally, the team at Recovery Centers of America can help. My name is Don, and I'm a treatment advocate for RCA, and I stopped drinking 30 years ago. If I can do it, so can you. Muster up the courage and call me anytime, even in the middle of the night, at 973-722-4720 for a confidential conversation so we can get you 
you back in the stands where you belong. Concerned family members can also call me. Again, any conversation will be absolutely discreet. I am here for you. Just pick up the phone. Hmm. working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Max MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Is it time for you to replace your roof? Well, give Hadco Builders in Chester, New Jersey a call. They've built an amazing reputation over the past 30 years as one of New Jersey's top builders. Hadco will replace your roof the right way at a super fair price and usually get the job done by the time you come home from work. Call or text Tony to get a quote today at 973-818-8516 or visit them at hadcobuilders.com. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one -on -one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. you can get better with better with physical therapy located in the madison ymca request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com i enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission namely by nurturing my relationship with them their staff their donors their volunteers and their board members i think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. I actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here.
Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Morris Sussex Sports has a big goal we want to ask your help in achieving. One of the most popular things we do is publish digital trading cards of athletes. We feel strongly that high school athletes are one of the most important parts of our community, and the trading cards allow us to recognize and celebrate as many athletes as possible. So we have a lofty mission to create a trading card for every single athlete that wears a sports jersey in the Morris Sussex area. But to do that, we need more local businesses that want to help us by sponsoring these trading trading cards. This is a great way for a business to endear themselves to the communities they do business in. And not only would their business be featured prominently as a sponsor of a new scholar athlete every week, we also advertise them across our social media, our website, and our game broadcasts. And we get over 4 million views a week, 80% of whom are adults 35 to 65. There is no other publication or media company that has even close to that reach in this region. So if you know of a local business that loves to support the scholar-athletes in their town or their surrounding area and would benefit from the exposure we would bring, please send them our way. Just call or text 973-713-5944 or email george at morrissussexsports.com. is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right, because CCM is in the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice, like me. Go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. WISC gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WISC Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. for them we're here for you get back the right back here nick carlson here at frederick douglas field 
Still 45 left to go, a full second half left to be played here in the USL 2 game here on the campus of Rutgers Newark, just outside of NJIT, just about a couple blocks down the road. You can also keep in mind that here on Morris Elite, we did have the USLW game. They ended up winning seven to zero over the Cedar Stars here on Morris Elite. A lot of the youth girls were here. Some of the youth boys are here too, supporting their senior teams. You can also know that you can get your kids into the game with the Morris Elite 2023 summer camps whether it's the soccer or swim camp. They've also got tournament camps and goalkeeper technical camps. They all start in just a few weeks and register today here at www.morriselitesoccer.com slash summer camps. Officially underway through and it doesn't look like as of right now just giving a little bit of an eyeball test that there is anyone new in as Peterson now ranging down a ball on the far side just a little too far out of his reach. So it seems like Coach Donato is going to rock with all of his starters that he came into the game with as Perez working down on Morgan. Some of the keys in that first half. Portas had that goal earlier, is now spinning around inside the box, and Pascarella doing a good job of playing keep away. Did seem like a corner kick was coming but it seems like they're whistling it in another direction. There is a referee right next to that flag, but they're just gonna give it back to Velasquez. So they're gonna say it was last off of NJ Coppa. 46-20 in a 2-1 game. As Morgan gives it over to Riley, and you look around, you just see Riley in the neon green cleats, Franco in the neon orange cleats. Let's get Arbor in the pink as the ball set on through and a good opportunity just punched up and over inside the box. Velasquez kind of just puts his hands up. Seems like the defense kind of a little bit of a mishap there as a corner kick coming. Lazo sets up over there. And the first really good opportunity coming not even two minutes through. It's the same situation that happened in that first half with just at about that two and a half minute mark, that's when that goal was scored. We're right on track for it to happen within the next couple seconds or so, if it were to. And a ball set up and in and finally headed away. Now still up and in through as Arbor trying to track it down on the near side. <clears throat> Arbor now over to Perez and Perez just sends it back. Morris Lee doing a good job of pressing in the defensive zone. As now a ball set up and over. And in the offensive zone, it's kind of been a little bit different. They haven't done a good amount of pressing. It's been a lot more letting them come to them, specifically at that midfield line. The majority of the battles have taken place on that big R of Rutgers Newark. As Morgan fires one all the way, Mazina ranging over but just a little too far out of his reach. Lopez collects it and he gets his first touch of this half. Kendall Thomas was heading over there as well and marriage too. Seems like it's all of the same starters for them as well. You've got Carlos Portas and Albert Portas, the two brothers now just flipping sides. got Portas right in front of us here in the press box and a ball that gets sent his way. So Portas plays it off of his foot and gives it back over to Carlos as a quickly whistle gets charged and Mazina is Mazina not happy with it. Perestrella looking over too and everybody just all kind of confused. Mazina looks back towards the referees and a lot of calls specifically controversial in that first half. Four yellow cards were given, a, a red card was given as well. Streeter was tossed. Perestrello does have a yellow, so he's gotta watch out. Franco's got one too. All things to look at here in the game Morris Elite here on Morris Elite Day. Trying to just close that gap and get this back to Tide. Right 
as now MJ moving quickly with it. Peterson able to collect it and gives it back over to Velazquez. Velazquez gets another touch and finally winds up booting one all the way back towards the midfield line. Now up ahead for Nunez and just heading back and forth as Mazina runs into him and another one. So Mazina, his second one where he runs into him. Let's see if the referee goes to his pocket. He's been pulling out the yellow cards, doesn't pull out one there as they send one back for Lopez. Doing a good job with it is NJ Copa. Five minutes through and back with it. Been a lot of passing back and forth. Mazina goes over to try to press and Peterson gets involved as well. Peterson looks to have tape on his left leg. That same one that he went down on, but it was more of his ankle that they were looking at in that last game. As they look one up ahead for Perez. Perez trying to track it down before Franco gets involved. And now they look back towards Riley. Six minutes played through and a lot of the passing back and forth. We've seen it from the majority of both of these teams just trying to find all the different types of scoring holes. There hasn't been a whole lot for the Morris Elite. You had the one with Perestrello earlier, but a lot of it's been NJ Koba. His whistles blow as Nunez looks like he got shoved. Everybody comes over as now the Referee comes over, he's got a yellow card in his hand. Hold on a second, he's got a yellow card. Comes over, and he gives him the yellow card. Six and a half through, and we have our fifth yellow card. So it's officially Kendall Thomas, the one who gets charged with the yellow card. I mean, Kendall Thomas looks like he might have just shoved him. It was kind of just like a playful shove, but it, it, a lot of yellow cards have been given in this one. And as the ball sent all the way over, Peterson ranging over, Lopez comes out of the box as well, and Peterson takes a fall quickly down and finally able to get it away. Peterson down and in pain is now over at the midfield line, Riley trying to collect it. Peterson has not moved from being inside the box, ranging on his right side as Franco and Nunez playing back and forth. Mazina, and now Gavin Morgan just sends it out of bounds as Peterson is down on the ground, has not moved. As the referee will head over, regardless, a really good chance we're gonna send this to break as the referee signals over and finally the trainer's gonna come out. So we're gonna take a quick step off here. Peterson went down hard. We'll see you in about a minute or so right here on More Sussex Sports. Professor teaching tax and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WISP supports my passions. I truly believe that WISP wants me to be the best version of myself and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. 
back here at Morris Sussex Sports. Jeremy Peterson just came off. He was able to walk off on his own power, so that is a good thing. 54-46 played through, and we're going to have a throw-in coming. Still running out of time are the Morris Elite. I mean, granted, we are nine minutes through, but Morris Elite have only scored five goals on the season. Go along with their four games. Haven't really shown much offensive explosion compared to NJ Copa. Fifty-five twenty-two left to go, and Franco's in control of it, and he just boots one up. Finally, punched back over, and Morris Lee, who set up for the offense, now over at the midfield, looking for somewhere to go, and Arbor's got it, and just punches one up. Now up with it, Kowecki. Kowecki had a golden opportunity in that first half, but Riley was able to get a foot on it and kind of just send it to the side. So now you look over at the Portos brothers. And then now back the other direction. Velasquez has not really been tested all that much. Not only really in this half, but in this game. He has the two goals against him, but other than that, has a save and nothing really has went his way that he's really had to make a save on. Lopez, the same deal. He runs all over the box as well. You see Velasquez kind of like to stay there. Lopez... There's a lot of moving around in it, as now Mazina takes a step in front of it. Still, a Copa with it, now moving over, has a cutter, has Lazo, and finally sends one back. Horsley doing a good job of not allowing them inside that box, but they can't really get possession of it in the offensive zone as Lazo up ahead in a couple moves. Now gives it over for a cutter. Marriage with it. Marriage lost it. Now up head to Perestrello. Perestrello looking for somewhere to go. And finally, Morris Elite has regained possession. Just looking across that midfield stripe. Now a good header up for Nunez. Nunez working on it. Takes a fall. Whistles blow. Just on that line, Nunez, the one who took a fall and... I mean, what else is new? He gave him a yellow card. 57-20 through. So now make it six yellow cards and a red card. This is crazy if you're more Salina and Jay Copa. Logan Meshesha, the one charged with the yellow card. There's been six, and that is a lot more than I've ever seen in a soccer game as Peterson coming off that leg issue, and now he takes a fall, and Peterson just couldn't do anything with it. Looks like he lost his footing as a ball that flutters back over. They're going to have a free kick coming, and... Just up ahead, 58-18 left through as a sub is coming. So you've got Jordan Kanika coming in for what looks to be Augustine Puentes. So Kanika is going to come in, the kid out of Villanova. <clears throat> Going to have a good opportunity to get something going on the board. Plays in that forward position attacking as now Thomas sets one up and over and back now for Perez. Looking for somewhere to go. Now inside the middle. Kanika comes up too. And now Riley off his foot and now sets one overhead to Velasquez. Decides to just not go that way and then gives it over. <clears throat> Haven't seen a lot of Mazina here in this half. Balls have been sent his way, but they really can't seem to time him up. As now looking for somewhere to go. Gets up behind some of the defenders. Peterson gets involved as well. Had that knee up in the air. Kanika plays it off of him, now moves to his left. Kanika quickly moving, has great bursts of speed. 
And then now goes back to his left, moving way into the corner. Kanika working now with his right, fires his shot just a little too far out. Now moving all the way up and in. All the way into the corner. They're gonna say it's NJ Copa's ball. Still a good chance from Kanika, the closest that they've really been all half. Fifteen minutes through. Sixty sixteen played and ball that gets set up. Velasquez came all the way outside of the box and Peterson sends it back to him. Now Velasquez finally gets rid of it. It's got a shot. Velasquez able to make the save and skids a little bit, but has it. A little bit of an awkward scenario there is kind of just sent it right back towards him. Velasquez with a bouncing ball save and Morgan's gonna look to go deep with it. Looks towards Messina as a header. Now set up ahead for Franco. Franco spins around and then now looking for somewhere to go. Nunez just a little too far out of reach and Yazo just sends it back up over. As now whistles blow as Lopez down. He's already got the yellow card in hand running over and Nunez charged with a yellow card. Lopez looks like he kind of just got his feet taken out from under him. So now we're at the seventh yellow card, eighth red card. So 61-33 through. as Lopez looks to be just fine getting up with it. Definitely looked like he was down and in pain, but regardless. So we just looked it up and the most yellow cards issued in a FIFA World Cup game is 18. And it was between Argentina and Netherlands. So if we get overtime for whatever reason, we are on track for it. 62 18 through. We do have seven in this one. As quickly moving up ahead is Arbor. Now parallel with the box. You got to think if there's a goal here, make it in a 3 1 game against a Morris Elite team that. Plays fantastic defense, but has struggled offensively at times. Looking for somewhere to go. Peterson gives it back to Morgan, and Morgan thought about booting it, but Messina didn't seem like he was ready. And now finally a ball set for Messina. Messina plays it off of his foot, and then now sets it back, but Perez able to get a foot on it. Gets it all the way back to Lopez, moving around. Looks just fine on that leg as Yazo looks back that way and then goes over towards Mishecha. So if the Morris Elite were to win this one, they are one, two, and one, and then NJ Copa is two and three, they would get the head-to-head. -head. So you would have a jump in the standings here. You'd go up to five from six. It's also a Morris Elite team that finished last in the division last year. They do sit at six, so an opportunity here to get to five. Plus minus will not help as they are four and eight. Plus minus of negative four. And a 63-55 played through. And up ahead to Perez, and Perez just playing it back. So a lot of playing back here. Almost feels like it's keep away. NJ Copa does have the lead as Nunez comes over. And Portas over on the far side. Back over to his brother and Perez. Looking for somewhere to go as whistles blow. and Now just outside the box. So now we've got a kick coming. This will be the third one that NJ Copa's had. They have already had two, now this will be three.
be interesting to see the approach that they take here. That is, it will be Jonathan Yazo, the one to kick it. He looks like he's going to set it up, but you got a bunch of bodies around him as well. Yazo now talking to Muchecha. Now Marriage comes over too. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be anyone else besides Yazo lining up as it's going to be Franco, Riley, Perestrello all as well. Nunez too inside that wall and they line up. Velasquez is ready. A ball fired and just missed the left. It looked like it went in from our angle but just hit off the fence on the left side and bounced just at the back of the net. So we stick at two to one as whistles blow, as subs coming in for the Morris Elite. So it's Jordi Navio coming in for Mazina, as well as Andrew Weiner. So we've officially got our three new subs. We did have Streeter who was sent out earlier, if you want to count that as really getting subbed out, more of kicked out. But now a ball sent up ahead for Navio. Is Navio moving over towards the near side? Had Peterson right to his side, but just plays it backwards towards Morgan. That is Riley. Crossing the mid and now gives it over. Has Franco in front of him. He's been a big component of this team so far, but really has not had a lot of good opportunities. He's been more of the point guard on that attack, sitting in the middle. Now you've got some speed out of there. And now moving quickly with it up ahead. And Pascarella can't really do anything with it as NJ Copa just decides to play it back. Bearing any FA Euro New York, if they were to score another goal in their game, Morris Elite will not be any more in last place in terms of for points four. The Long Island Rough Riders, on the other hand, 5-0, and oh, they are 12-2 and two in terms of Goals four and goals against Manhattan's ten and five. Hudson Valley Hammers eleven and six. NJ Cope with that fourteen and twelve. They've only allowed one goal in this game, but they allow a lot of goals, and this is just one of those games where they really have not allowed all that many. As Peterson gets it back over to Morgan, and they'll just try to set up shop here. Just under 22 minutes left to go, so officially halfway through. Still, you got a good amount of time here if you're the Morris Elite. Don't really have to panic or anything, specifically if you're head coach Donato Kirchi. Got a lot of good opportunities in this first half, and Lopez just boots one away. There's also a good time to let you know as we get close to it. The Morris League Cup is back for 2023. Registration did just end, but it is the U8 as now inside the box, moving quickly with it. Kowecki and Portas were there, but now they just play it back and a ball sent up through, headed up through and off of Riley's head and out of bounds. Corner kick coming, but it is also the U8 and U18, or U8 to U18, boys and girls Morris League Cup. It is set for June 24th and June 25th. You can register your team today as well as being a part of the Morris Elite. And with a corner kick coming, set inside the box and right over. No one really seemed like they were ready on the side of NJ Copa. 69-20 through. And Velasquez is going to have a kick coming. Estrello sends one back to Morgan. And Velasquez finally just launches one up. Has now off the head of Wiener. Wiener's got a 
move quickly with it before it just gets sent back. So Kendall Thomas, Portas, and Yazo have done a good job of just playing back and forth. It's right on cue. That's really what they do is they just sit there and try to find the openings. Hasn't been a lot of offense as Perestrello takes a fall. As now they just get going right away. So now quickly moving with it. Riley's up there too. And a ball sent in off of Morgan. Now quickly just inside the box pushed back. He's got an open shot. He fires it. It goes right off the head of Franco. And still with it, another shot fired. Floated up in the air. Yazo finally caught over by Velasquez. Beautiful turn of events there by Copa. Morris Elite, on the other hand, doing a good job specifically. Vasquez, under 20 left to go. Velasquez sending it back up, but... Balls that just keep fluttering out of bounds. Riley quickly moving with it, just trying to get the throw. And so we're under 20, so running out of time are the Morris Elite. Perestrello did score a goal in the 80th minute in their first game against FC Motown. They also allowed a goal in the 80th minute against AC Connecticut. All things to look at. What is under 19 minutes left to go? Now quickly moving with it, Machacha up ahead and in. Kowecki with it, making a couple moves on Morgan. Morgan doesn't really seem all that faltered as Perez takes one back and they'll go all the way back over to Arbor. As Arbor now finds one in, it gets sent in, goes off of the leg of Pascarella and then now into the parking lot, all over by the cars. My car is not over there, so we are safe. 71.55 through and under 18 left to go. A corner kick coming and another good opportunity in a game that, for the most part, has been filled with a bunch of good opportunities. Friend Jay Copa is still with it. Peterson's got to go collect outside the box. And then now start the transition. Peterson looked for somewhere to go and a ball that gets sent out of bounds. Garcia Perez has done a really good job of pressing and keeping the ball inside the zone. As now back ahead towards Wiener. Wiener not able to collect it. And now over to Machacha. Machacha once again backs over to Yaza. Has now a header up through and saved away and has another shot. Isn't able to collect the re. But it looked like it was offside. So yeah, they say it was offside. It's a golden opportunity there. Velasquez with a great save. They make it an offsides call. So the Morris Elite dodge one heck of a bullet. As Riley working on that far side and sends it back to Velasquez. NJ Copa is showing loads of pressure knowing that they're right there from icing this game as the ball that goes off of Pascarella's feet. So 73-19 left to go, and we have a sub coming here for NJ Copa. It's going to be... When we get a name, we will let you know. But definitely Perez, the one to come out. For NJ Cope has a ball. Up ahead, trying to play defense on it is Navio. Now inside the box, Morgan steps in front of it, now trying to set the break. Morgan takes a fall, whistles blow. And now Morgan is down and in pain. He gets up slowly, still limping though, as Navio still with it. Getting that 15 minute mark, you're getting to desperation time. Yazos hasn't really touched the ball all that much, but it's really just been him and Thomas just passing back and forth. Got Portas there as well. 
but it's been a lot of keep away, a lot of clock drainage like we're seeing now. And now they look to go back in that direction too. And a ball sent back to Lopez. They have not crossed the midfield line since they've had the ball. Still looking for somewhere to go. That ball still not crossed the midfield line and they play it back so a little bit of keep away. And then finally now pushed over, a ball set up, Portas with it and whistles blow offside so all that passing around took about two minutes off the clock just to get an offsides call. But definitely a time waster here if you're Morris Elite. Aristrello gets it over to Peterson and Peterson back over. And a five and six on the line for both of these teams. NJ Copa just to stay at five and Morris Lee to potentially move up to five. Has a throw in coming and to keep in mind that the Morris Lee Super Y team is one of the best opportunities to go against some of the top players in the region you can try out this summer. Not only to be a part of the Morris Elite, but get an opportunity to qualify for Nationals in Tampa, Florida. As Riley pushes one up, has Wiener over on the far side and sets it up for Kanika, just a little too far out of his range. Still able to protect it though and gets it back to Riley. Riley up to Perestrello. Perestrello sets one up. Now lost it for a sec, gets slide tackled. No signal yet. And another yellow card, make it eight on the day, nine in total. Definitely is down, no signal yet on who it was. It looked to be Pascarello. He's holding that left ankle. Referee will come over to take a look, see if they signal over the trainer or not. And it doesn't look like they will as the referee Kind of walks away from it. So it's going to be Lazo, the one that they give the card to. Slide tackle that turned into the eighth yellow card of the day. Seventy-seven forty through, and you gotta be thinking, if you're Morris Elite, you wanna get out there as quick as possible, mostly because you're down two to one and running out of time. So Riley's gonna have a free kick. They've already blown the whistle to let the game get back underway. Everybody's kinda just looking around. Riley seems a little confused himself. As now finally a sub coming in. It's going to be St. Bill coming in. So St. Bill now in the game in the 78 30 mark. So probably about three minutes or so was taken off that as Wiener. Now recollects it and sends it back over to Morgan. Now Morgan up for the first time that we've seen all game. Peterson now plays it off of Wiener's foot. Wiener does a little bit of a skip around and now a body completely falls. Just a complete run into him. You gotta be thinking there. I mean, they both ran into each other with full speed with their shoulders and I mean, I've seen eight yellow cards so far, and that one could have been the easiest yellow card to give. 79-10 through, and we're at about just under 11, and Morris Elite starting to hit the panic button here as we're about to get under 10. As now Franco plays it off of his head still, it's gonna be NJ Copa's ball. Wiener takes away the pass lane, and now still taking away the pass lane, but it still just gets passed. 
All the way over to Lopez. Pascarella applying the pressure on a ball that stays in bounds. Now they say out of bounds. So just on that line, a throw in coming. Now under 10. The 80 minute mark and moving up with it. Riley comes off the foot, now gives it to Franco. Franco finds Peterson, now leaves it for Navio. Navio moving in, finds a cutter. Franco up ahead, had an opportunity. Franco fires and just up above. Just down the rocks, had an opportunity. Just went way over. Lopez just kind of eyed it over and good opportunity there. 80-30 through. Hitting that around that nine minute mark. More Salit with potentially one of their best opportunities that they've had all game. Is now up ahead, he's got a cutter. Up ahead, St. Ville fires a shot and scores. St. Ville, the dagger you gotta think has just put this game on ice, 3-1, with nine left to go. And Jay Copa now leads this game by two. Yeah, you gotta think, just find the cutter. Peterson just a couple of steps behind, trying to step in front, and Velazquez basically point blank, couldn't really do that much. Peterson is down. You saw it on the back half of that replay. Currently laying on the ground inside of the net. They're gonna send some of the trainers over there now. As now a bunch of the training staff is heading over. So you gotta hope Peterson's all right. But regardless, we're gonna take a quick step off for Jeremy Peterson down right now in the net. Under nine left to go here on more Sussex Sports. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable, and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down, if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast, it's worth the wait. Morris Sussex Sports has a big goal we want to ask your help in achieving. One of the most popular things we do is publish digital trading cards of athletes. We feel strongly that high school athletes are one of the most important parts of our community, and the trading cards allow us to recognize and celebrate as many athletes as possible. So we have a lofty mission to create a trading card for every single athlete that wears a sports jersey in the Morris Sussex area. But to do that, we need more local businesses that Back here in this one, campus of Rutgers Newark, and Jeremy Peterson, who just had been taken off, walking off right now under his own power, went down with the leg problem earlier, but now they are walking, holding him right now, just making sure that he's walking all right. It's gonna be Pierre who's come in for him in 83-40 as Gavin Morgan just sends one back over. As we're about to hit that five minute mark in just about a minute or so. Orsley really running out of time. As now Kanika takes a fall. Haven't seen him really at all besides in that first four minutes or so when he came in and had an opportunity but just kind of missed it wide. Really haven't seen him get all that involved. As Kanika looking for somewhere to go. Now with it, has a burst of speed, moving around a couple, moves around a couple more, runs into a bunch. And now Wiener fires a shot, an easy save by Lopez. Just kind of a ground ball right into his chest. Let's 
Thomas doing a good job of playing keep away. Navio getting involved as well. Portas two and a ball that gets punched all the way up. And then back towards Riley takes a fall. Whistles blow off sides call. Riley went completely airborne and just landed on his stomach. I mean, that's a yellow card, and I'm at a loss for words right now. That is the ninth yellow card of the game, and I, I'm not that sure what the yellow card was for. As 85-20 left to go, I mean, Riley went airborne, but it almost just seemed like both of them were going for the play, and it just ended up being a yellow card. 85-29, we've got our ninth yellow card. Can we make it 10 here under five left to go? So Morgan up ahead has Wiener now moving. Doing a good job pushing him away as Machecho lost it. Now up ahead for NJ Copa. Looking on the near side, Machecho looking for somewhere to go. Runs into Morgan. And then now moving quickly had the crosser, but Franco sends it away. Now up ahead to Navio. Navio playing it off his foot and takes a fall. No whistle blow. Navio is trying to make the argument that he pulled on his jersey as Kanika goes over to play some defense. As now up ahead, Franco just completely runs into St. Villa's. Under four left to go. If it sticks as to where it is now, we will sit at five and six with Morsley being six. If the Westchester Flames do win their next game, Morsley will drop down to seven. So they'll go from six to seven and trying to not let that happen is the Morris Elite who currently face a two goal deficit under three left to go. Lopez and these defenders have done a good job of playing keep away. As now Arbor moves one up ahead and now trying to find a cutter's got one on the far side, moving quickly with it. Portas doing a good job of keeping a couple steps ahead. Pascarella on a fire shot and just missed left. So Pascarella with the shot, no signal yet on if it's going to be a corner kick. I didn't think it would, but Everyone takes a bunch of steps back, so it will be a kick coming here from Velasquez. As Riley winds up and then gives it back over to Velasquez, who punts one all the way over. Wiener comes up to try to play some defense. Perestrello two, and they move all the way over. as a little bit of a fall there by Marriage, and now finally, just ranging out of bounds, no signal yet, and finally, just inside the box, pushed away. Still trying to get something going is NJ Copa. Finally pushed back. And then now at midfield, Morgan takes a step involved. And then finally whistles blow. Nikilo was the one who got a foot on Morgan. Has a minute 20 left to go. So this score sticks at where it is. You've got the Morris Elite now with their fifth goal four, but they have allowed eight on the season. NJ Coppa, on the other hand, will now be at 17 and then 13 in total. So they'll now have a plus minus of four. Was that two, now it's at four. Westchester Flames, another team to look at as well. Currently their plus minus is zero, eight goals, four eight goals against our same exact record as Morris Elite, one, two, and one. Something to look at in terms of standings as Pierre takes one off his foot and gives it over to Morgan, and Morgan gives it back over to Riley. Gotta start moving forward, and they just push one back ahead towards Velasquez. As now 
finally whistles blow. Navio took a fall, and we have our 10th yellow card of this one. Make it number 10 as Pierre sends one back over Navio and Portas kind of just full on ran into each other. As we've now hit the 90 minute mark, so you gotta think that there's been a little bit of that extra time with Peterson and specifically some of the goals that were scored and this and that. Now you're gonna have potentially a couple extra minutes of extra time here, but now off the takeaway up ahead. Nikila with it. Looks to set up shop up ahead. Gives it over on the near side and working quickly is Mirage who just looks in the other direction and gives it back. Not really showing any signs of wanting to move the ball forward. As they play it all the way back for Arbor. Arbor up ahead and now a crosser sent through. Still inside the box, Morgan tried to head it. Now finally punched all away on the inside of the flag. So no throw in coming, or no corner kick coming. Now off the throw in inside the box and trying to set up another. Portas keeps it in. Now working quickly, shot fired up and over. Got to think if you're Morris Lee, you're just trying to get to that whistle. Now finally the referees blow and Velasquez seems a little bit confused saying to move it back about a couple inches or so. It's finally Riley just collects it and sets it up. Franco able to get a foot on it. Navio as well. Now Wiener moving quickly with it on the near side. Sets one up ahead for Pierre. Pierre now setting up Navio. Back over the direction for Pierre. A ball sent through. No one there. And a good opportunity just set up by the fact that not everybody's on the same page. as now everybody just plays it back and forth and back and forth is Arbor just going back and forth with Saintville as Lopez just boots one up back for Arbor and it looked like he was gonna turn back around and he does so really just trying to drain out the clock here is NJ Coppa. Now on the near side, no whistles blown yet. Yeah, you gotta think it's coming soon as now Portas playing it back and they just go back in that other direction. So really they have not been crossing the midfield at all until now as now a ball sent on through. St. Bill in the vicinity and Morgan plays it back. Velasquez came out and Pierre comes over and it'll set up Jordy. Now over to Franco and Franco Looking for somewhere to go with it, and then goes for Pierre and Morgan, and they'll look to just play it back for Velasquez. As now a shot here on the open opportunity, Velasquez, and a ball punched up and over him. If the 3-1 wasn't a dagger, you gotta think that that making that 4-1's really gotta sting if you're Morris Ali. I mean, right up until that 80 minute mark, Another goal and then now make it another goal. So a 4-1 game. Velasquez just passed it right back to him. So Lagrasso's credited with the goal in a 4-1 game. Now you can Bump those stats up to 18 and 13, so plus minus now five. <coughs> now more Salit, currently sitting at four and 12 in terms of goals for and goals against as ball sent all the way up. Wiener in the vicinity and Lopez will collect.
Still a lot of playing back and forth as that'll finally do it as whistles finally blow. A 4-1 game. NJ Copa ends up winning this one 4-1. It was 2-1 for a good majority of the time. Then the 3-1 came at about the 75 minute mark and then the one recently. Four goals scored by NJ Copa. On the other side as well, Perestrello had the lone goal for the team. So definitely a lot to work on if you're the Morris Elite right now. Bearing what happens with the Westchester Flames, they're going to be at around that six or seven spot. So for everybody here in terms of Morris Sussex Sports, the Morris Elite, everybody who has had a part in helping us today, the women's team, the USLW, won today 7-0 to zero against the Cedar Stars. USL 2 and the boys not able to get it done today here on Morris Elite Day against NJ Copa. Lose this one 4-1. We'll see you on Wednesday and then next Saturday for the doubleheader for everyone here. I've been Nick Carlson along with Morris Sussex Sports. Thank you and good night. getting involved, Nunez too, had that goal earlier. There's a ball set up and in, and just straight on through. Albert Portas got behind everybody, and Velasquez wasn't even ready for it. Down front. As now the wind up, the kick, the shot, and Velasquez comes up with it. Able to keep this game at 1-0, a laser on the line, a big scramble for it. Just in that corner, and finally, body's fault, Streeter not happy, gets one over, Mazina punches one up ahead, still inside the box, Paul sent on through and pushed away, once again back with it, and it's good, a goal from Enrique Perestra. Interesting to see if they go deep with it. They decide to go short, and the ball played off the foot weird, ends up in Kowecki. Kowecki up ahead, now on the far side, Portas. Portas has a cutter going through, getting around him, and a shot scored on the right side. Just narrowly got past Velasquez. Maybe six goals in total by the time we get to halftime as now we're up ahead. Moving quickly with it, Velasquez comes out and able to make a big save. Lazo's the nearest one there, but Velasquez had to come all the way out. Dubs yet, we're still early in this one, 25 through, 20 left to go as the ball set over towards the side. Lazo ranging down, getting around Morgan inside the box. Couple moves, a couple more moves, and Morgan sends it away. A great play there defensively. We're looking to set up. Fuentes on the near side, looking over for Nunez. Now moves around the box, has a shot, and just misses right. Another good opportunity. Had it from Mazina early, he missed right now. Fuentes misses right. In the last place. Now up ahead, Peterson collects it and sends it up to Fuentes. Nunez gets a foot on it. Has a cutter over there, has Mazina, the one-on-one, -on -one. Mazina, moving around, a couple of dancing moves, that fires a shot and just bounces over off the foot. A lot of slide tackles, is just trying to infiltrate that box, sent over Morrisley, doing a good job of pressuring, still headed up in the air, now back with it, an opportunity inside the box, sent back. Morrisley doing a good job inside that box. Being, you look around, you just see Riley in the neon green cleats. Franco in the neon orange cleats. Muscat Arbor in the pink as the ball set on through. And a good opportunity, just punched up and over. Inside the box, Velasquez kind of, ball that gets set up. Velasquez came all the way outside of the box and Peterson sends it back to him. Now Velasquez finally gets rid of it. It's got a shot. Velasquez able to make the save and skids a little bit, but as it, a little bit of an awkward scenario there is Now a header up through and saved away and has another shot. Isn't able to collect the re. Riley comes off the foot, now gives it to Franco. Franco finds Peterson, now leaves it for Navio. Navio moving in, finds a cutter. Franco up ahead, had an opportunity. Franco fires and just up above. 
just down the rocks, had an opportunity, potentially one of their best opportunities that they've had all game. Is now up ahead, he's got a cutter. Up ahead, St. Ville fires a shot and scores. St. Ville, the dagger you...